All right, Job chapter 1, verse number 1, ang sabi ng Bible, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. So we're going to go through the book of Job, and uh, every time we study the Bible, we ought to be asking who wrote it, Who did he write it to? And ano yung um, context ng aklat? Uh, so, sa dalawang Wednesdays, na, uh, unang Wednesday na ito, tapos yung susunod na Wednesday, we'll, we're going to look at the context of the book of Job, including the overall outline, para meron tayong idea patungkol sa pangkahalatang larawan ng aklat ng Job and the significance of the book of Job uh, in its context, Uh, the ca- canonical context, ibig sabihin, bakit ito nasa gitna ng Bible? This is in the middle of the English Bible here. And uh, w- uh, what's the significance of the placement of Job in the middle of the scriptures here? So Job starts out the poetic section of the Bible. So alam natin na yung Bible natin ay mixture ng prose at saka poetry. So pag sinabing prose, P-R-O-S-E, tapos poetry. Yung prose, yan yung regular, normal way of communicating ng kwento or event or kasaysayan. Prose, regular speech. Poetry naman, creative medyo merong creativity yung poetry. Hindi siya regular. Special um, um, way of communicating something. In English, yung poetry, nagra-rhyme siya. Uh, Di ba? Uh, roses are red. Violets are blue. What was it? What, what is, what's next? <coughs> Chocolate is sweet. And so are you. Oh, yun. Oh, anyway, I just nagra-rhyme siya, okay? Pero sa poetry ng Bible, hindi rhyme ng salita ang importante, pero yung rhyme ng isip, the rhyme of thought or reason, is the point of Hebrew poetry. Uh, so, makikit, matutuklasan natin dito sa Book of Job yung mga paral- parallelism, ibig sabihin yung mga magkakatugma ng mga linya, at yung mga linya na salungat, uh, contrasting, par- antithetical parallelism, and chiastic structure. Yung, yung tinuruan natin sa Book of Psalms, na alala ba ninyo yung chiasm, chiasm ng Book of Psalms? So yung mga linya na, ayun uh, bawa, ganun. <coughs> so yung key, letter yan ng Greek. So chiastic Ibig sabihin yung A, punto ng A, match siya sa A prime. Tapos yung B, match siya sa B prime. Pero nagkakatugma sila. Uh, I eat because I am stressed. I am stressed because I eat. <laughs> so, eat, eat, stress, stress. Ganun yun. So, yung, yun ang uh, tawag natin dito, kiasim isa yun sa mga uri ng poetry, ng Hebrew poetry. So, wala naman tayong final exam sa Book of Job, kaya huwag kayong ma-stress. Don't worry about that. Alright. So, again, the Book of Job is located in the middle of the Bible, the English Bible, and it begins the poetic section of the Old Testament. So, ilang books ng tula meron ng Bible ang, ang lumang tipan. Lima. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. So, those are the five poetic books, limang poetic books ng lumang tipan. Alright? So, this is full of creative uh, creative communication. Now, meron ding prose, meron ding regular speech ang book of Job uh, yung unang chapter prose siya yung unang dalawang chapter 
Tapos yung sa gitna, poetry siya. Tapos yung mga huling chapters, yung dalawang, or yung kaisa-isang chapter na sa kahuli ng Book of Job, babalik tayo sa prose ulit. So anyway, next week we'll look at the outline of the book. Alright, so we're looking at Job. Uh, sino si Job? Well, Job, ang ibig sabihin ng pangalan niya, uh, maraming ibig sabihin, hindi sure yung mga Hebrew lexicographers kung ano talagang ibig sabihin ng pangalang Job. Pero lahat ng pangalan sa Bible may kahulugan. Ang pinakamalapit na idea natin sa name of Job ay uh, persecuted uh, or hated or he that weeps speaks or cries out from a hollow place. That's the name of Job. His name means he that weeps. At kung alam mo kung ano yung laman ng book of Job, matutuklasan mo kung bakit nga naman angkop yung pangalan niyang Job sa kanyang, sa kanyang buhay. And so, uh, we see that Job, sa so verse number one, there was a man in the land of Uz. So, saan itong Uz na ito? Hindi rin tayo sure kung saan yung Uz. Uh, pero masasabi natin, this would probably be somewhere in the land of Edom, malapit sa disyerto ng Saudi Arabia, or something somewhere out east in the, uh, over there. Uh, tanyag siya sa kapanahonan niya as one of the greatest businessmen, successful businessmen sa kanyang buhay uh, sa buong daigdig. During the days of Abraham, <coughs> Or perhaps earlier. So, naalala ninyo si Abraham? Ah, sino yung family na tinawag ng Diyos sa Ur of the Chaldees? That's Abraham. Genesis chapter 12. Ah, binigay sa kanya yung promise ng Abrahamic covenant. Eh, meron naman siyang tatay. Sino yung tatay ni Abraham? Who is the father of Abraham? Tera. Who is the brother of Tera? Nahor. Okay, so Nahor, uh, um, malamang Job is from Nahor, that, that side of the family. And Terah and Nahor both worshipped Jehovah God. So they both feared the Lord and <coughs> God used Abraham <coughs> and uh, centered, his, um, centered the, the will of God in Abraham, not through Nahor or Job. So anyway, kaya natin sinasabi yung book of Job ay sinulat bago sinulat ni Moses yung kanyang unang limang aklat. So there, we can say Job is the earliest book of the Bible. So Job experienced all this prior to Moses, Moses' life. And so we say he's really a bit earlier than Abraham even. And the reason being is walang record sa book of Job patungkol sa Exodus. You don't read about the Exodus in the book of Job, the crossing of the Red Sea that is so prominent in the Psalms. You know, nadaan, dumaan tayo sa book of Psalms. Ilang beses ginamit ni David or ni Asaph or yung mga manunulat ng Psalms yung Exodus experience. It's so prominent in the book of Psalms, but it's absent in the book of Job. So why is that? Malamang sinulat yung Job before sinulat yung Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Hindi rin binanggit si Moses. Hindi rin binanggit yung batas ng Diyos, the law of God. Hindi rin binanggit yung mga kings or judges of Israel. So therefore, we can put the book of Job somewhere Uh, either before Abraham or during the time of Abraham. Um, now, meron mga binanggit na mga palasyo ng mga hari. There are places for kings mentioned. Look at Job chapter 3 verse 14. Job chapter 3 verse 14. With kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves. So, kings and counselors built desolate places for themselves. This would be like pyramids. Pharaohs and, and kings uh, would build ziggurats and pyramid structures for themselves. 
the name Pharaoh himself means big house. So uh, we can see that kings are already in the <coughs> tradition of building houses. There are cities already in the book of Job. Therefore, we know that it's not just a guy, a nomadic tribe. This is a established man. Uh, Job chapter 15, verse 28. Job 15, 28. He that dwelleth in desolate cities and in houses which no man inhabiteth, which are ready to become heaps. So, dwelling in desolate cities. Well, so ibig sabihin, merong development na sa kasay sa lipunan. May mga lungsod, may mga siyudad. Hindi sila katulad nila Abraham nung kapanahon ni Abraham na nomadic. Nagta, nag, um, nagta-travel yung clan nila, yung tribo nila, travel ng travel. Not, not Job. He is situated in the land of Uz, very successful and uh, very prominent. Tapos, binanggit naman ni Job yung worldwide flood ni Noah. Naalala ninyo yung flood ni Noah. Well, that's very early in the history of man. So, look at Job 22, verse 16. This perhaps alludes to the uh, 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 worldwide flood. Job 22, verse 16. Which were, cut, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood. Therefore, uh, perhaps that would allude to the worldwide flood of Noah. So obviously, Job's lifespan is after the flood and right before Abraham in, their, in that space of time where uh, men were organizing themselves into cities. And so uh, that's just certain things about Job that we can observe. Uh, number two, alam natin na si Job ay tunay na tao. He's a true man. He's a real, he's not fiction. So ang problema dahil ito ay tula, Akala ng iba na siya ay fictional character. No, he's a real person just like uh, Ezekiel teaches us. Go to Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel 14. And verse number 14. Ezekiel 14 verse 14. Though these three men... Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. So, na, totoo ba si Noah? Is he a historical figure or is he fictional? Historical. Totoo ba si Daniel? Is he fictional or historical? Okay, so is Job fictional or historical? Historical. All right, so look at verse 16. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, they only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. So these three men, they really lived. Look at verse number 20. Inulit na naman ni Ezekiel. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, And so on and so forth. So look at James chapter 5. James chapter 5. And verse 11. James chapter 5 verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job. And have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. So sabi ni Pastor James, naalala ba ninyo si Job na sa katapusan nakita niya ang kabutihan ng Diyos at pagmamahal ng Diyos sa kanya at siya ay blines ng Panginoon. And so James remembers Job. So um, we know he was a real person. All right, number three. Here are some things about Job na ma-observe natin sa chapter one. Una sa lahat, He was a godly man. He was a godly man. Paano natin alam na siya ay godly? Sabi ng verse 1, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was 
perfect. <clears throat> Ibig sabihin ng perfect, mature. Spiritually mature. Ibig sabihin, natutunan niya na hindi maging batang isip. Isip bata. Okay? So, sa lipunan natin ngayon, paano mo alam na ang tao ay mature or perfect? Hindi siya nabubuhay sa kanyang emotion. Okay? If you are controlled by your emotion, you are not mature. Okay? Yung sa mga bata, ha? lalo na sa mga maliliit na bata, sanay sila na mag-react sa kanilang damdamin. Pero pag tumanda ka ng konti, natututo ka na tanggapin, huwag umiyak, huwag mag-react ng katulad ng bata. So you learn maturity. You no longer react according to emotion. <laughs> Now, if you're a Christian, we should learn to react according to the principles of the Word of God. The Word of God should control us, not our emotion. Now, question, is emotion good or bad? Is emotion good or bad? Good yun. It's good to have emotion. Kasi indicator ang emotion. May pinapahiwatig yung emotion. Halimbawa, may sasakyan ka. Habang nagdadrive ka, may makikita kang indicator ng ilaw sa dashboard. Ting! Ay, wala ka ng gas. <laughs> so, yung nakikita mong indicator light, nagsasabi sa'yo, time na para maggas. Now, is that good, bad, or ugly? Good! Kasi kung hindi ka maggas, bahala kang magtulak ng sasakyan. O maghanap ng mga kaibigan na pwedeng tumulak. So, yung emotion natin, may pinapahiwatig yung emotion natin. Kaya lang ang problema, kapag inuna natin yung emotion natin, uh, uh, yung mga desisyon natin base sa emotion, dun tayo nagkakamali. Yung emotion indicates kaya huwag tayong mabuhay sa indicator, mabuhay tayo sa motivation from the Word of God, not from emotion. And so he, Job, learned this. And uh, secondly, sabi dito, upright. Upright. Uh, so, uh, matuwid siya. And one that feared God. So, here's one of the reasons why we know he was a godly man. He feared God. Okay? So, sa dami ng pwede tayong matakot, <coughs> yung iba takot sa boss, yung iba takot sa, uh, sa takot sa sitwasyon, or takot sa report, bad report, or takot sa kung ano namang. We can fear all different kinds of things, but the one person we really ought to fear is God. We should fear the Lord. <coughs> Sabi dito, and eschewed evil. So yung word eschewed, it just simply means he avoided. Avoided evil. So halimbawa, si Job, uh, <clears throat> lumalakad siya. May mga kaibigan si Job. Halika, Job, inuman tayo. <coughs> oh, anong gagawin ni Job? Avoid. Hindi oh, na dumadaan dito si Job. Ba't kaya hindi na siya dumadaan dito? Ewan ko, tara, yun ang muli. Oh. So, hindi na dadaan si Job doon. Bakit? Hindi niya ilalagay yung sarili niya sa landas ng kasalanan. So, tayo mga Kristiyano, marami tayong matututunan sa mga words na ito. Kung tayo uh, eschew natin yung evil, matutulungan tayo. Matutulungan tayo sa buhay. Kung tayo matakot tayo sa Diyos, kung tayo matuto maging mature, kung tayo matuto tayo maging upright. Okay, so Job is a godly man. Number two, Job is a family man. So ibig sabihin, meron siyang family, <coughs> wife and seven sons and three daughters. Verse two, there are born unto him seven sons and three daughters. So <coughs> he's a big family man. At uh, hindi uh, pangkaraniwa, hindi... Um, 
It's not unusual in the Old Testament to have families, big families, and that kind of stuff. So this is wonderful. It's great that the Lord blessed him with many children. And uh, so uh, he, he is also a wealthy man. Mayaman siya. Hindi siya mahirap. Look at verse 3. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she ashes, very great household. So as that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So sa lahat ng mga tao ng East, siya para siyang gobernor, kung baga para siyang mayor. He's a very wealthy, powerful man. He deals with animals. Meron siyang mga animals. Meron din siyang mga servants bukod sa mga anak. And so, a uh, farmer maybe, perhaps, but a wealthy agricultural man. All right? Then, he was also a healthy man. Uh, so, uh, healthy siya. So, sa time na ito, he was 70 years old. So, 70 years old na si Job. Ayan yung mga anak niya, yun ang asawa niya, yun ang uh, pangkabuhayan niya. And everything's going well for Job. So we see this is the outline of who is Job. Now, God allowed Satan to tempt Job in the following four areas of his life. So, pinayagan ng Diyos na subukan ni Satanas si Job. Dito sa apat na uh, bahagi ng kanyang buhay. Una, yung kanyang pera sa kanyang kayamanan. Look at chapter 1, verse 14. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them. Yung mga Sabians, yan yung mga parang pirates, mga pirata, mga barbarians na pagala-gala. Kin- pinatay daw, kinuha yung, yung, mga, yung, yung mga oxen, yung, yung mga baka, yung mga asno. <coughs> <laughs> and fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. Pinatay rin yung mga alipin mo. Job. And I'm only escaped to tell thee. Ako lang na, nakatakas para mag-report sa iyo, Job. May mga, mga sabians na pumasok, pinatay nila yung mga uh, alipin mo. Kinuha yung mga hayop mo. Verse 16, And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped to tell thee. Job, may apoy na bumaba galing sa langit, nasunog yung mga hayop at yung mga alipin mo. Ako lang nakatakas. Siguro maamoy pa siya ng smoke. And, um, and so, nakikita natin dito, Satan destroyed his wealth, his money. No? So, Uh, verse 17, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out of three bands fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea, slain the servants with the edge of the sword. I am only escaped alone to tell thee. So pati mga Chaldeans, ito naman, mga uh, Babylonians naman sila. Iba na namang klaseng mga barbarians. Uh, ganun din yung ginawa nila. So Satan attacked him financially. So, <clears throat> ewan ko sa inyo, pero when you, uh, when you suffer financially, napakalaking stress sa tao yan. Yung uh, financial problems. Alright? Well, hindi lang financially ang attack ni Satan. Pati rin yung kanyang family in attack ni Satan. Look at verse number 18. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there, behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I am only escape alone to tell thee. Job, may malakas na hangin na galing sa ilang at na, nawasak yung bahay at natumba yung mga dingding. <coughs> sa iyong mga anak. <clears throat> Verse 19, And behold, there came a great wind. Okay, so you got that. <clears throat> Verse, uh, uh, <clears throat> so we see that 
uh, uh, Satan attacked him financially. Satan attacked him in his family. Satan attacked him in his flesh. Think about chapter 2, verse 7. Chapter 2, verse 7. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto, the, unto his crown. Magmula sa paa hanggang sa ulo, uh, binigyan si Job ng mga uh, boils. Ano yung boils sa Tagalog? Pigsa. Mga pigsa. No? So parang may infection siya na at yung mga boils na ito ay napakalaking boils from his foot hanggang sa kanyang ulo. So this is satanic attack on Job's health, his flesh. Tapos, inatak din siya sa kanyang mga kaibigan. So meron siyang tatlong kaibigan from chapter 2 to chapter 37. Job has three friends who came to visit him and to accuse him of hiding sin. And those three friends, they were there. They, they intentionally wanted to comfort Job. Kasi nga, magkakaibigan naman sila. Pero imbis na naging blessing sila, naging hadlang sila kay Job. Kasi ang nasa isip ng tatlong kaibigan na ito, si Job ay may tinatagong kasalanan, kaya kasinumpa ng Diyos. Job, magsisi ka na. Okay? So, yan ba ang katotohanan? Yan ba? May, tinago, may sinabi ba ang Diyos sa chapter 1 na tinago niya ang kasalanan, na nasa ilalim siya ng sumpa ng Diyos dahil sa kanyang kasalanan? Ano yung sinabi ng Bible patungkol kay Job? He is a perfect, upright, one that feared God, and is cute evil. Okay, so sa character ni Job, wala tayong makikita sa kanya na tinago niya yung kasalanan na sa ilalim siya ng sumpa ng Diyos. Pero hindi alam ng mga kaibigan yun. Kasi, ang tao ay palaging humuhusga base sa nakikita. Hindi base sa katotohanan. And so, ginamit ni Satanas yung kanyang mga friends para talagang i-pressure siya. Anyway. <coughs> so, number five, God bless Job in all these areas of satanic attack. So, sa katapusan, let's go to chapter 42. <coughs> When we get to chapter 42, we'll see that God blessed Job immensely having gone through satanic attack, God restored everything to Job. Verse 42 to uh, 42 verse 12, God restored his fortune, his, his finances. 42 verse 12, I will not, uh, 42 verse 12, sorry. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. So the Lord blessed, returned to him his fortune plus more. And so God really financially restored Job. God also restored his family. So tingnan mo, verse number 13. Job 42, verse 13. He had also seven sons and three daughters. So, dinagdag ng Diyos. Yung mga seven sons and three daughters na kinuha kay Job, sinoli ng Diyos. Dinagdagan pa yung kanyang mga anak. So, here, his wife, now let me ask a question. Did his wife, did God get rid of his wife? No. Did God bless his wife? Yes. Now, so natatandaan natin yung wife ni Job. So, Marami yung nagtuturo na pati rin yung wife ni Job ginamit ni Satanas. You know, I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that Job's wife was in sin or that the devil used Job's wife. You have to understand, Job was broken and so was his wife. Furthermore, did God rebuke his wife? So yes, may sinabi yung wife ni Job na hindi tama. 
Pero question, rinebuke ba siya ng Diyos? Anong sinabi ng Diyos patungkol sa kanyang wife? Wala. Nothing. God didn't say anything about Job's wife. In fact, God blessed them and gave them more sons and daughters. And so, uh, we can say that um, Job's wife uh, is a victim and the Lord uh, took care of her. And uh, so, didn't, didn't even rebuke her the way he rebuked the friends of Job, which we'll see as we look into this book. So, God gave him his fortune back. God gave him his family back. And God gave him his flesh, his health. Look at 42 verse 16. 42 verse 16. <coughs> After this, lived Job 140 years. So twice. Twice. So 70 years old siya na nangyari ito. Dinagdagan siya ng doble ng buhay niya. So Job lived quite long. He lived, uh, let's see here. If he was 70 years old and the Lord added to him 140 years, how old would that be? 210. 210? Yeah, so Job lived 210 years. So God really extended his life and blessed him tremendously. And then uh, God dealt with his friends. Uh, yung kanyang mga kaibigan look at chapter 42 verse 7 42 verse 7 and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath so God vindicates Job verse 8 Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. <coughs> and my servant Job shall pray for you. And for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly in that ye have not spoken to me the thing which is right like my servant Job. So kayo, mag-alay kayo ng mga sacrifices. Kasi kung mag-pray si Job, patatawarin ko kayo. Pero kung hindi mag-repent o mag si Job, yayariin ko kayo dahil hindi kayo nagsalita ng tama. So God rebuked uh, Eliphaz and Bildad and Zophar, those three friends. And so we see, look at verse 9. So Eliphaz the Temite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Namathite went and did according as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord accepted Job. So pinatawad naman ni Job at tinanggap ni Jehovah God yung kanyang mga kaibigan. Pinatawad din ni, ni Lord yung tatlong kaibigan ni Job. So we see here, uh, eto yung mga, yan ang summary ng book of Job. So you see the whole picture of Job here. All right so theme, ano ang tema ng aklat ng Job? What is the main theme of the book of Job? Well, it is this. God is sovereign over man's sufferings. God is sovereign over man's sufferings. Now, <laughs> may mga aklat sa Bible na pinapakita sa atin kung ano ang mga nangyayari sa kalangitan. Katulad ni Daniel. Nung nagpray si Daniel, hindi sinagot na, hindi na sinag, sinagabal ni Satanas si Michael ng tatlong araw bago, ma- ma- bago dumating yung sagot na pinapanalangin ni Daniel. So, the, the Bible at times shows us the things that are going on in heaven that we have no idea about. We don't have a clue. We think <clears throat> that we just live our life and You know, we pray and ask the Lord to help and that kind of stuff, but we have no idea that there's a spiritual warfare. Meron palang spiritual warfare sa likod ng lahat ng ginagawa natin. Kaya sabi ni Paul, remember what Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Ibig sabihin, meron palang rangko ng mga spiritual warfare sa kabila ng mga pagsubok natin bilang tao. So, 
Meron ka bang kilala sa tao sa gabal sa buhay mo? Baka hindi pala laman at dugo ang sagabal sa buhay mo kung hindi yung spirito na gumagala o yung spirito na nasa likod ng laman at dugo na yun. And so Job is one of those books that gives us a glimpse into the spiritual heavenly activities. And in all this, sa buong book of Job, we have to remember something. God is sovereign over man's sufferings. And so, hindi natin may explain kung bakit ang tao ay nagsasuffer. We won't be able to know why man suffers in light of a sovereign God. However, we can trust in the Lord. And in our sufferings, that someday God will reveal to us His purpose and plan. And as we go through suffering, at least we are suffering in obedience and honoring a sovereign God, a God who is in control, a God who knows. And so, ito ang problema ng uh, mundo natin ngayon. So, may mga tao na Ang tawag doon ay Theodesy. Theodesy. Theo, meaning God. Desi, ibig sabihin noon, just or justice. At ang problema ng tao ito, kung makatarungan ng Diyos, kung mabait ang Diyos, kung ang Diyos ay tunay na sobren, kung siya ay tunay na makapangyarihan sa lahat, bakit bakit pinapayagan ng Diyos yung kasamaan sa mundo natin? So that is a problem. Bakit pinabay- pinabayaan ba ako ng Diyos pag nag-suffer ako? Bakit pinayagan ng Diyos ang hamas na kumuha ng mga uh, ilang daang mga tao at patayin sila? Bakit? Kung ang Diyos ay tunay na sovereign, bakit ang gulo ng mundo natin? Wow. <coughs> If God is so good and God is so sovereign, how come the world is all messed up? So this is the problem of theodicy. And the book of Job speaks exactly to that. And so we'll look into these things as well. <coughs> we'll offer some biblical insights about that. So, uh, Job, uh, tandaan ninyo habang binabasa natin yung book of Job, suffering is always caused, ah, ang, ang isip ng tao, suffering, suffering, comes directly because of sin. Always. I'm suffering because I'm in sin. That is the underlining false assumption throughout the book of Job. False, ibig sabihin hindi totoo. Now, totoo na ang sin ay nagdudulot ng suffering. That's true. Sin brings suffering all the time. That you can say is true. But just because someone is suffering doesn't mean that they're suffering because of personal sin. <coughs> And so, as we read the book of Job, no matter what verse or chapter you're looking at, keep that in mind. Yung mga kaibigan ni Job, hinahatulan si Job, Job, you are suffering because of personal sin. You need to repent, Job. You need to get right with God. You need to be restored fellowship with the Lord. Because apparently you're being cursed. You're being judged by God. Look, Job, you're really under the curse of God. Well, we know that is not true. So Job is one of the few characters in the Bible who suffered without a cause, without a reason. Think about Job chapter 2. <coughs> Job chapter 2 verse 3. 
Look at Job chapter 2, verse number 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil, still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Chapter 2, verse 3. Without cause. So, sabi, okay, let's look at this. So, sa book of Job, ilan yung mga characters natin? God, Job, Job's wife, Mrs. Job, <laughs> si Elipas, Zophar, Bildad, Elihu, at saka si Satan, Satan. Now God said, Job suffers without cause. Walang dahilan. There is no cause for Job's suffering. That's what God said. Job knows in his heart he didn't sin against God. So Job knows I'm suffering without a cause. Does Job's wife know that? Hindi. Kasi hindi alam ni Job wife yung kanyang heart. Hindi rin niya alam kung ano talaga yung situation niya. So, that's wrong si Job's wife. What about Eliphaz, Zophar, and Bildad? Ay, lalong mali sila. Kasi sinasabi ni itong tatlo, Job, nagsasuffer ka kasi sa personal mong kasalanan. Kaya ka sinumpa ng Diyos. Eh, anong sinabi ng Diyos? Without a cause. Okay? Elihu, wala siyang sinabi. Pero hindi rin siya pasa. Kasi, wala naman siyang sinabi na mali. Elihu is a neutral. Okay? Hindi tama, hindi mali. Neutral siya. E si Satan? Mali rin si Satan. Kasi sinabi ni Satan. Kaya lang siya naglilingkod sa'yo. Blines mo siya. Ang galing mo lahat ng yan. Susumpahin ka ni Job. Hindi, ka na, siya, hindi na siya magiging uh, faithful sa'yo ay napatunayan ng Diyos mali si Satan. At palaging mali yan. Palaging sinungaling si Satan. Mamamatay tao yan. So, he is the father of lies. So, we know. So, <coughs> throughout the whole book, Job suffers without a cause. Now, there are two other Bible characters who suffered without a cause. David suffered without a cause. Look at Psalm 69, verse 4. Psalm 69, verse 4. <coughs> Psalm 69 verse 4 They uh, that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head that would destroy me being mine enemies wrongfully are mighty then I restore that which I took not away So David experienced being hated by people without a cause without a just reason or a cause Job experienced that David experienced that and there's one more. Who else suffered without a cause? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Look at John chapter 15 verse 25. John chapter 15 verse 25. But this this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that was written in the, in their law. They hated me without A cause. So, in-apply ni Jesus Christ yung scripture ni David sa kanya. <coughs> Na, people hated Jesus without a cause. Now, let me ask you a question. Meron bang dahilan kung bakit ipinako si Jesus Christ sa krus? Meron bang uh, matuwid na dahilan kung bakit dapat siyang ipako sa krus? No. There's no reason why Jesus had to die on the cross legally, morally, There's no reason for it. He died without a cause. People hated him without a cause. He himself was not in sin. He did not do wrong. And yet, he was crucified. And so, Job, David, and Jesus experienced suffering without a cause. 
So, <clears throat> tandaan natin. So, when you read the book of Job, you can read about any verse and you can pick up from any chapter, any verse, as long as you know this, this basic uh, thought, you can see, oh, okay, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, what they said, <coughs> yung mga sinabi nila, is true, kaya lang ang problem, yung paglagay nila ng katotohanan kay Job ay mali. Where they're wrong is in their application of their truthful statements to the situation of Job. So in essence, yung mga kaibigan ni Job, tama yung mga sinabi nila, kaya lang mali sa pag-apply. Oh. Alam mo Job, kaya tayo nagkaka, nagkakaroon ng suffering dahil sa kasalanan natin, Job. Now is that true? Do we suffer because of sin? Yes. Now is Job suffering because of his sin? No. So see, the truth is true, but the application of the truth in Job's situation is wrong. So this is a warning to us. Kailangan kapag nagturo tayo ng biblical truth, huwag tayong magmadali na i-apply yung truth sa tao na hindi natin kilala or hindi natin alam yung sitwasyon nila. Otherwise, we could be misapplying the scriptures. Okay, and we do great damage when we misapply the scriptures. All right, so Job's suffering accomplishes several things. Number one, Satan is silenced. So, tumahimik na si Satanas nung na-prove ni God na talagang may, may integrity naman talaga si Job. Number two, Job realizes his personal condition. So, In all this, Job understood something about himself. He learned something. Look at Job chapter 40, verse 4. Job chapter 40, verse number 4. Behold, I am vile, and what shall I answer thee? I will lay my ha- hand upon my mouth. Sabi ni Job, alam mo na tuklasan ko sa lahat ng ito? Ako pala ay makasalanang tao. Yes, Matuwid, yes, hindi ako, natatakot ako sa Diyos. Yes, sa mata ng tao, matuwid ako. Pero sa puso ko, natuklasan ko, ako ay isang makasalanang tao. Now, bakit napakahalaga nun? Lalo na, ito yung unang aklat ng Bible. This will be the earliest book of the Bible. So why is Job... Discovering his sinfulness, his vileness in his heart. Why is that significant? Being the earliest book of the Bible. Because ang natural tendency ng tao ay itago ang kanilang sariling kasalanan at sariling kalagayan. It is natural for man to hide his sinfulness and vileness. So Job exposes his own heart. He sees it. And he repents. Look at 42 verse 6. Job 42 verse 6. Wherefore I adhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Ah, makasalanan ako. Kaya ako nagsisi ako sa sarili ko. Sabi ni Job. <coughs> Natatanda niyo nito. Ang tao, lalo na pag hindi kilala ang Diyos, akala nila okay sila. Okay ako, hindi naman ako mamamatay tao. Hindi naman ako gumagawa ng masama. Okay lang ako. No, regular na tao lang ako. Paminsan nagkakamali. Paminsan gumagawa ng magaling. Oh, I'm just a normal person. Pero hindi nila uh, nakikita ang kabanalan ng Diyos at hindi nila nakikita ang kanilang sariling kasalanan. Kaya walang pagsisisi. So bakit napakahalaga ni, ng Book of Job? Kasi ito yung pinakamaagang book ng Bible at dun pa sa simula, tinuturuan na tayo ng Diyos na ang puso natin ay makasalanan. Our hearts are vile and we need to repent. And Job did that. All right? Job finally sees God and has a personal relationship with the Lord. He did before, but now he knows more about the Lord. 
42 verse 5. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. So, tingnan mo ah, pag ikaw dumadaan ka sa suffering, kapag ang reaction mo ay biblical at tama, mas lalo mong makikilala ang Diyos. You will learn more about the Lord in suffering if you suffer by faith. You will learn more about God. There's no other shortcut. To learn more about the Lord, to learn more about how sinful man is, this is God's university. Job learned to pray. Chapter 42, verse 10. Chapter 42, verse 10. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. You see? When he prayed. So Job learned how to pray. Suffering teaches us to depend upon God. And we learn to pray. And it also demonstrates that God is sovereign over all things. Job 38 verse 4. Job 38 verse 4. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare thou if thou hast understanding. So sa, 40, sa 38, ang Diyos na ang nag... Ang, nakikipag-usap kay Job at tinanong ng Diyos, Job, nasaan ka nung nilapag ko ang pundasyon ng mundong ito? So, ibig sabihin, Job, hindi ikaw ang may control. Ako ang may control. And so, he learned about the sovereignty of God. And Job testifies about the coming of the Lord and the resurrection of the believer. So, Job 19, verse 25 Job 19 verse 25. Inaasahan pala ni Job yung resurrection. Job 19 verse 25. Great passage of scripture in the Old Testament. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. So, merong pag-asa si Job. Sabi niya, alam ko, balang araw, maguburol din ako, kakainin ako ng mga uod, nawawala din yung katawan ko sa mundong ito, pero balang araw, babalik ng Diyos yung katawan ko at ha- makikita ko ang Diyos sa, sa laman ko. I will see God in my flesh. Yan ang pag-asa ng resurrection. Yan ang pag-asa ng mga Kristiyano. We have the hope of resurrection hindi tayo naniniwala sa reincarnation. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> malamang, merong sa kapanahonan ni Job na naniniwala sa reincarnation. And Job is saying, no, I don't have a hope of reincarnating, coming back into a different form. I have the hope of a resurrection. That yes, my body will suffer and die and become dirt. But God will bring me back and I will see him because my Redeemer liveth. Oh, he believed in the resurrection and the coming of the Lord. So, here's some things to remember as we go through the book of Job. Number one, the devil cannot tempt nor afflict a believer without the permission of God himself. So, comfort ito sa atin. Kung meron tayong dinadaanan na pagsubok, ay inaprubahan yan ng Diyos bago yan dumating sa atin. So, kapit lang tayo sa kamay na nagmamahal sa atin dahil hindi niya pinayagan yung mga pagsubok na hindi natin kaya. We know that from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Look at 1 Corinthians 10.13. I want you to know that when you go through suffering, everything that you are suffering is measured by the throne of God And God knows you can, you have the capacity by His grace to bear the affliction or suffering. 1 Corinthians 10.13 1 Corinthians 10.13 There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So God has grace 
to enable us to bear our testings and trials. So this is amazing. Number three, God is sovereign. He deals with us providentially. Napakahalaga nito. Alam mo ba, well, kung ikaw ay believer, if you are a believer, walang aksidente sa buhay. Everything is divinely, is divine appointments. So, alisin nyo sa vocabulary word yung accidents. This was an accident. Well, yes, humanly speaking, that could have been an accident. But biblically speaking, accidents are divine appointments. This is a divine appointment. God was in it and has a plan and a purpose. And the question is, will you receive the Lord and will you receive His appointments? Will you look at your life as an accident or as an appointment from God? You see? So, we don't believe in nature, huh, nat- nature natural event. This is just a natural occurrence. No, This is a divine appointment. And so, hamon nito sa atin. This is a challenge for us. Not to think in worldly term, but to think biblically about our situation. No? Uh, <clears throat> so, Brother Bill, do you believe in accidents? Well, humanly speaking, okay, that was an accident. Nobody meant to do this. This just happened. Uh, a tragedy, sure. Uh, but biblically speaking, God allow these things to happen to teach us something to see to see more of his glory if we react correctly to the sufferings and the testings and the trials so these are divine appointments number four, satan's power is above nature so may may kapangyarihan talaga si satan patungkol sa nature but he his power is limited he, he does not have power over god Amen. <laughs> Next, God's hand of protection can be seen against many powerful and mighty enemies who work to undo God's people. So, pansinin mo yung buhay ng Kristiyano, ha? Marami tayong kaaway, pero hindi tayo nauubos. So, kahit na... Uh, kahit na mayayaman, kahit na makapangyarihan yung mga kaaway ng kristyano, hindi pwedeng matiwalag o masira ang kristyano. Matagal na sana tayong pinatay ni Satanas, kung totoo siya. Eh. Kasi mamamatay tao siya eh. Pero tingnan mo, nandito pa tayo. You see? So, God, God's power to save changes the entire human condition. Bad people are made good by the power of God. So God can transform people. God can change people. <coughs> Kaya, uh, huwag kayong ano, matakot na mag-share ng gospel, mag-share ng word of God. Kasi ang kapangyarihan para palitan ng tao nasa Diyos. God can change people. God can transform people. And uh, ang problema lang ng tao... Uh, often times, people just want relief. But they don't want biblical change. Uh, I, I remember nung bago ako dito, may lumapit sa akin, Brother Bill, can you biblically counsel us? My husband and I are having marital problems. I said, are you willing to change? She said, yes. Why? So that I can have my husband and I together again. Is that a good thing? Yes. Is that a biblical thing? No. You should be willing to change because you want to conform to Christ. And if you conform to Christ, if your husband doesn't follow the Lord, you're still going to follow the Lord. Why? Because it's more important to biblically change than to have relief from the situation. 
Do you see that? So, yung goal, mali. So, question, natuloy ba yung counseling session? Kung ayaw mo mag... If you don't want biblical change, kahit anong counseling ang pasukan mo, hindi magbabagong situation mo. Why? Kasi hindi ka sumusunod sa salita ng Diyos. But God has power. Can people change? God has power to change people. But people need to receive that. People need to accept that. <clears throat> All right? <laughs> Number seven, God's providence returns the good or evil of men to themselves. So, sa mundo natin, parang may batas ang Diyos. It's like God has a law here on earth. You reap what you sow. So, question. Brother Bill, wala na akong inaani sa buhay. Puro sama. Ang sama ng mga sinasuli ng Diyos sa akin. Tanong, nagtanim ka ba ng goodness? O bakit ka umaasa ng magandang ani? Wala kang tinanim na good. Yang tinanim mo, masama. O kaya, kung nagtatanim ka ng masama, anong maasahan mo? Masama. So, may batas ang Diyos. Whether you are saved, whether you are not saved. Kung marunong ka magtanim ng masama, aanihin mo yan. You will reap. At yung pag-ani, mas marami pa kesa sa tinanim mo. And so it works both ways. Number eight, God ordained prayer to be the catalyst for change. I don't understand it, but God changes when we pray. Or let's say this, Maybe our prayers change us to conform more to God. But if you want things to change in your life, they will never change until you pray. Prayer is important. Think about Psalm 57 verse 2. Psalm 57 verse 2. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things For me. So you see, I will cry unto God. I pray because I know the Lord will, will change all, will do all things for me. God will answer prayers. God, God, God changes his mind. Naalala ninyo si Hezekiah? Remember King Hezekiah? God said, pinadala niya si Isaiah. Isaiah, you tell Hezekiah he's going to die. Anong ginawa ni Hezekiah? He prayed. And God said, okay, I'll give you 15 more years. Why? Because he prayed. Now, what if Hezekiah didn't pray? His life would have ended 15 years earlier. You see, 2 Chronicles chapter 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles 16 verse nine. Second Chronicles 16 verse nine. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show Himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward Him. Herein thou hast done foolishly; therefore, from thenceforth thou shalt have wars. So the eyes of the Lord travel to and fro. Beholding the evil, the good, yes, but to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect. So is your heart right with God? And if you don't have your heart right with God, God sees it. And God judges. But if your heart is right with God, God hears your prayers. And do you believe that God can intervene in your life? Yes, he can. And certainly through prayer. Number nine, God's providence will strengthen our faith. So kapag nakita mo yung answer to prayer sa buhay mo, lalago yung faith mo. Lalo ka pa dapat na mag-pray. Lalo ka na dapat mag-serve sa Panginoon. As the Lord answers prayers, it'll increase you. As you constantly come to church and listen to the preaching of the Word of God, yung Word of God pala, faith cometh by hearing, And hearing by the word of God. Kaya yung mahalaga talaga yung church. You hear the word. 
Saan ka pupunta na may magtuturo ng ganito patungkol sa faith para lumago ka sa pananampalataya? Saan ka pupunta? Sa chess club? Sa LTO? Ha? Sa opisina? Sa bangko? Sa hukbo? <coughs> Wala ng institusyon sa mundo na magtuturo ng salita ng Diyos para lumago ka sa pananampalatay. You need to be in church, to hear the word of God, to have faith. It'll strengthen you in your faith. And last, those who deny or refuse or to acknowledge God, God will destroy. Last verse, Psalm 28. <coughs> Psalm 28, <coughs> verse 4 and 5. Psalm 28, verse 4 and 5. Give them according to their deeds, according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after their work or their hands. Render to them their desert, because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of His hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. So do you understand this? God will destroy everyone who doesn't submit to Him. God will destroy you if you do not submit to Him. God will destroy me if I do not submit to Him. Disregard the Word of God and He will destroy you. Ganyan kahalaga ang salita ng Diyos at ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. So these are laws here on earth. If we disregard the Word of God, He will disregard us. Now, if we surrender ourselves to the Word of God, God will establish our ways. All right, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that as we look into the book of Job, that we observe all these things that are so important, that we see your sovereignty in the midst of man's suffering, that we would learn to focus on you instead of self. And that through obedience uh, to you and fear of you, that we can see your hand of blessing upon our lives, even in the midst of suffering, that we would learn to become what you want us to become, glorifying Jesus Christ, becoming strong Christians for you. We ask your hand of blessing upon us now in Jesus' name. Amen.